Hello and welcome, I am King Zakree with MMOplay.com presenting my top 10 favorite world bosses. This means no dungeon or story bosses, also no champion or lower bosses, largely because they are just regular monsters scaled up a bit or there's just too much to select from. I'll also be excluding the bosses from the ore region as the boss itself isn't that memorable, just getting to them is what makes them very dungeon like. With all those rules established that leaves a pretty short list, but a damn good one. Let's get into it. Number 10, Jungle Worm. Topping this list is one of the first bosses you probably encountered. Dig up this old piece of rope in the Celadon Forest. But don't be mistaken, this isn't the fabled triple trouble worm haunting blood tonic ghost. Nah, this is their little nephew twice removed. Uh, I mean, maybe we saw him at the wedding once and then we added him, I don't know. Destroy the three guardians for maybe some loot if you're fast enough. And then the terrifying straw of the earth rears its ugly head. Walk right up and slash you slash and dodge every once in a while to get your paltry prize. It's not much danger for most players, but still excellently cinematic. The Jungle Worm is a testament to how well ArenaNet is at making memorable experiences even near the beginning of the game. Number 9, Inquest Golem Mark 2. Praise Box, Lord and Savior Box. Find this hunk of junk over at Mount Maelstorm. Admittedly, that is one of the best entrances in the game. I mean, he came in flying in from freaking outer space. When's the last time you rocketed from the moon? Also, this dude just looks so freaking good. From the core modeling that looks like it was actually built piece by piece, and the remarkably dangerous animations like the cannon firing one. The reason this golem isn't higher up on the list is the obvious exploit of just standing on a box. If you don't use the box, the guy is just too difficult. Only seconds of fighting him at arm's reach will mean death, even for a necro bruiser. Accordingly, every fight is going to be 10 minutes of... Am I auto-attacking him? Okay, good. Number 8, Legendary Sand Giant. That's a weird place for this guy, huh? He's not big, he's not scary, he's not overly cinematic, and he's really just not much of anything. So why is he so high up on this list filled with dragons, demons, and other legends? Mostly because he's the little guy. He's quite the surprise. Imagine traveling through Dry Top, just collecting chests and the like, and BAM! Here's this spooky mummy dude trying to ruin your day. You call out to the one other person to help you, and they ignore you. You head out to take down this legendary sand giant. Pfft, I could take him. Proceed to be one-shotted. What prizes does this guy hold? Nobody knows, nobody cares, and by the time the sandstorm subsides, you'll be gone. Just like this segment. Destroy everything in a rather large fashion. Locate this fiery demon guy over in Mount Maelstorm. Quite ominous, huh? After about 10 minutes of waiting for someone else to do the pre, a large red humanoid thing bursts out of the center of the volcano, invoking fear in absolutely no one. Every once in a while, he'll cower in his little magma bath while you dally about, once again, waiting for someone to kill the mid-boss mobs. The great thing about this boss isn't the laughably bad presentation of the destroyer, it's the fantastic showcase of fighting in a freaking volcano. Also on a slightly unrelated note, the first time I fought this guy must have been in an overflow server, because there's only like 10 of us fighting this legendary status boss. It took like 30 minutes of whittling this guy down, and is one of my favorite experiences of playing Guild Wars ever. Granted, I don't want every boss fight to be like that, but every once in a while, it's kind of fun. Number 6, Legendary Carp Queen. Find and fight this weird crab queen over in South Sun's Cove, where all the weird crab things live. The major reason I love this boss is the unpredictability of where she spawns. Well, mostly anyway. It's just such a novel idea of the boss being able to spawn anywhere on a small map, especially with an animal like the Karka, because you feel like a hunter chasing down prey. Upon finding her, you'll see dozens of players streaming in to get their piece. Just make sure to watch out for that barrel roll move because it's pretty much a one hit in KO. Remember why Jungle Worm made this list? An entry level boss being all cinematic and the like. Old Shadow Behemoth is 10 times that. Put yourself back in the shoes of a new player and accidentally discover a whole bunch of players just standing around doing nothing in this empty swamp. Being the curious player, you decide to chill out for a minute and then your camera zooms out and a quest shows up on the right side of your screen. You frantically move the camera around, and then it shakes and a ginormous demon from the darkness emerges at the center of the once empty swamp. Seconds later, this demon howls a blood curdling scream and the fight begins. What a beginning to an awesome game. Unfortunately, this may have been spoiled for some people in the tutorial section, where it's nowhere near as epic. 
Travel into the far reaches of the once charred lands into the skeleton of what it was. As far as the eye can see, all you can see is damaged land and forsaken creatures. Flying overhead is the first dragon on this list, the affectionately named Shatner. <laughs> While not the most interesting fight, cough, stand and auto attack, cough. But man, does it look amazing. My favorite moment of the fight is when he raises into the sky in the full view of this amazingly terrifying dragon. Too bad most of the battle is a fight to the death with his claw. Number 3, the Claw of Jormag. Travel to the furthest north you can go into the coldest part of the world just to find this ice cold dragon at number 2. First and foremost, this is another representation of excellent modeling work over at ANET. The dragon is literally an ice cube, but more importantly is the phenomenal way to represent a multi-form boss in a multiplayer RPG. Start off by picking up a handy rocket launcher to take down that coward's wall while avoiding death by ice coming in from all directions. After getting him down low enough, he'll fly off to the crappy part of the flight. Once again, you grab a weapon and pretty much do nothing while you wait for some golems to happen to stun Lieutenant Dormag so he can actually do some damage. Otherwise, awesome fight. Number 2, Mordem Vinerath. Scour the desert in search of treasure and stumble upon the pack desperately fighting back plants. Yes, plants. After about 30 minutes of fighting back wave after wave, you're treated to a mini boss relative to your location. Awesomely, each base has their own unique mini boss. For example, one is underground and it fights like two burrower enemies, and another fight is against a stationary poison plant. Soon after, it's another buffer to actually fighting more to protect your VIP against the same enemies you've been fighting, except woo hoo hoo, they're stronger. After about 15 to 30 minutes, a teammate's failing to do the simplest tasks. <laughs> Just kidding. You finally get to crack the stubborn walnut. Except that you don't. <laughs> fight another buffer, which on average is just some dude with a fairly unique way to fight them. For example, avoiding a laser beam while hiding behind some honey. After all this, you would expect to actually fight the Vine Wrath, right? Wrong. Your part is over. You'll collect your reward after your teammates finish their path. And that's a lot of complaining for number two on this list, but really these sequence of events are varied in a numerous amount of ways and generally different from the rest of the game. It's not generally spectacular, but it's a nice solid level of cinematics and varied boss fights that you could be playing for dozens of hours. I would say these guys are honorable mentions, it's like Taita, the wait for someone else to destroy this annoying ass wall boss, Savnir, the 5 frames per second auto attack for 5 minutes boss, and Modnir thinks he's some kind of OG kind of boss, but these guys just suck. I actively avoid these guys on world boss runs because of how annoying they are to complete for just the paltry, maybe half gold's worth of Ecto. Time for number one, Tekatol the Sunless. Numero uno, the big bad dragon himself. Open on a pleasant looking beach and then fuck, what is that thing? It's a giant scaleless abomination. I don't want to touch that thing, gross. For newer players to this fight, you're just fodder to be thrown endlessly at this thing. Vets get defense on the surrounding areas and people who obviously don't know what they're doing get to be on the turrets. Fun stuff. At this point, it's burned down enough or failed the mission, which has actually happened to me and it's pretty embarrassing. Afterwards, hop on over to the boosters and sail to the sky to a few different area defending some points. Two minutes later, hop on back over and have a fantastic view of teammates and terrain. To phrase food and potatoes, it's an apt theater of war. Do this several times to burn the remaining health and collect your spoon. <laughs> this along with the Claw of Jormag and Vinerath is a fantastic example of a multiplayer boss done right. Everyone has a job, everyone is devalued, you matter. Instead of everyone just piling on, you have to form makeshift groups with players you've probably never met. It's such a wondrous, amazing feat to pull off to have other players working together in such a fashion toward their common goal. Let's hope future MMOs at the very least take a lesson or two from Guild Wars 2 on how to do bosses right. Once again, I've been King's Decree with MMOplay.com presenting my top 10 world bosses from Guild Wars 2. Do you want to tell me how wrong I am or maybe what you want to see next? Leave a comment below and thanks for watching.